I have disc brakes and they are the best. I was so wrong about this statement and the first moment when I realized this was during a descent after the first climb from the Tour de Station in 2023. After finishing the climb, I was looking to descend with a group of riders and that group was pushing hard. As we all know, descent is for attacking, not for recovery and because I was looking to push hard and stay with the group, I also had to break hard and late. After a couple of braking sessions, during that descent, I started hearing a noise coming from my disc brakes. My rotors were screaming at me to stop using them. Because I intended to stay with the group, I decided to ignore the request from the rotors. As you can imagine, I destroyed the rotors and the pads. I was surprised to see this happen and I was looking to understand why. What was the reason? What went wrong? Let me explain. Hello, I'm Gabriel and welcome to Cycling After 40. I'm starting an investigation and this is the second video from a series about understanding the components that I have on my bicycle, what is the relation between them and what alternatives I can use to make my bicycle lighter and in this way to make me faster on the climbs. For climbing big mountains, in the first video I discussed gear ratio, cranksets and cassettes. Now it is time to discuss the disc braking system, what options are on the market, what type of rotors I am using and if I can replace them. There are two main types of disc brakes, mechanical which uses cables and hydraulic which uses sealed hydraulic fluid to apply pressure to the calipers and pads. Some riders prefer mechanical brakes for easier maintenance and compatibility with most brake levers, while hydraulic brakes are becoming more common despite being more challenging for home maintenance. My recommendation is to have a professional mechanic bleed your brakes to replace the old fluid with fresh fluid which is necessary for proper heat management. Although it is more expensive than replacing cables, it only needs to be done on average every 6 months. SRAM advises bleeding hydraulic disc brakes at least once a year, while Shimano user manuals do not specify a service interval but recommend replacing the fluid when it becomes discolored. I have a hydraulic Shimano braking system and the first question that popped up in my head when I saw this statement was how can I check the color of the fluid? The only option would be to try to remove the fluid and this is not convenient to do. If I will do that, then what is the normal color of the fluid? I don't find this information from Shimano useful, to be honest. The next important thing in this system is the brake pads, which are located within the calipers and are meant to apply pressure on the rotor to slow down the bike while also withstanding heat and friction at high speeds. There are two main types of brake pads, resin and sintered. Resin pads, made of organic materials bonded with resin, offer a quieter feel and stronger bite but can fade and wear quickly in muddy conditions. Sinter pads, composed of metallic grains bonded at high pressure, are preferred for steep mountain biking due to their ability to handle heat and last longer in wet conditions. The pads should be replaced sooner or later depending on the road conditions and how often are you using the brakes. The good part is that there is no specific time interval to replace them. SRAM recommends replacing pads when the total thickness of the backing plate and the pad material is less than 3 mm, while Shimano suggests replacing the pad material when it is less than 0.5 mm thick. If you decide to buy new pads, first check what kind of brake pads you need, it is visible on the brake rotor. Keep in mind that if you switch pad types, it's advisable to also swap your rotors, as the pads and rotors pair by bedding small amounts of the pad material on the rotor. This means an old rotor may not perform optimally with a new pad type because it's already bedded to a different kind of pad material. If you find this content useful and you want to boost my morale, please subscribe, like and share. Thank you. Last but not least, we have the disc brake rotors. They range in size from 140mm for road and cyclocross to 203mm for downhill mountain biking. 
Typically, road and cyclocross uses 140, 160. Mountain biking uses 160. Trail riding uses 160, 180. And enduro uses 180. While larger rotors are better at dissipating heat, they are heavier. Therefore, it is recommended to use the smallest rotor suitable for your riding style. Like the pads, rotors should also be replaced from time to time because when you brake, you are eliminating a small part from the surface of the rotors. SRAM recommends replacing the brake rotors at the wear of 0.3 mm or when the thickness is less than the minimum stated on the rotor. For Shimano, when the rotor measures 1.5 mm thick or less, it's time to replace it. Starting my investigation, in my case, I found out that there are many rotors on the market with different qualities and prices. I don't know why, but I never thought about checking what kind of disc brakes I have. But because there are always moments when we learn new things, this happened to me also. I start checking what kind of rotors I have on my bicycle and it turns out that I have the cheapest possible rotors. Shimano Altus. Checking on the Shimano website, I saw this statement. This brake disc delivers extraordinary stopping power in all driving conditions. I was curious to see what is the weight of this rotor. 211 grams. Wow! So, I have not only heavy rotors, but also rotors that do not offer a pleasant descent or increase the confidence in me to push harder during the descent. As I said, the point of this series of videos is to find out what components I have on my bicycle and what parts can I replace to make my bicycle lighter and at the same time to improve the riding experience. My brake calipers are Shimano 105 R7000 series and I want to keep using them, so I was checking for new and lighter Shimano rotors. By the way, I also took into account changing my 105 calipers, but in my opinion, I will not gain much in regards to weight if I will use Ultegra or Dura Ace calipers. I can save up to 44 grams per caliper, but the cost is higher for such a small gain in weight. Searching for new disc brakes, I was surprised to see that I could save a lot by replacing my actual heavy rotors with the new ones like CL900 or RT900. The weight gain would be around 200 grams per set. Now, in my opinion, this is a good upgrade that I can make. Use disc brakes that will improve my confidence that I can brake safely, quieter and lighter. As advised, always check the compatibility between your brake caliper and the new brake disc that you would like to purchase to be sure that there will be a match between both components. Also, double check what type of disc brake you need, with center lock or 6 bolt. During my investigation, I was surprised to find an article from 2020 where it was stated that the pro riders were using mountain bike disc rotors during the Tour de France. Now, I'm not going into details about why the pro riders are using XTR rotors, but you can find the link of the article in the description. The point is, if the mountain bike disc rotors are good for them, can they only also be good for us? The answer is yes, for sure. I compared road bike discs with mountain bike discs and I could not find a clear reason why it will not work. Actually, in the case of XTR rotors, the weight is lower, so if you're looking to save weight, go for mountain bike discs for your road bike. You will also be surprised to see that they are also cheaper compared with the road bike rotors. Now I know that I need to replace my heavy rotors with lighter ones and the weight saving will be noticeable. 200 gram is a lot from my point of view. This is a good upgrade that I'm planning to do next. Thank you for watching and till the next time, let's spin the wheels.